Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is London Breed, and I'm the mayor of the city and county of San Francisco. Happy to be here with all of you here today. Um, some of you know um, that my grandmother, she raised me and she took care of me. And when she got to a point where, you know, she needed a lot more help, there were programs like Lady Shaw that helped to support her. 我和市長回憶一下,市長說今天很高興來到我們少日夫爵士夫人中心,他想告訴大家聽就是他自小就在做舞臭大的,直至到他做舞需要更多的老人的服務,是真的有好像我們安老自助處這些中心去幫助他們
like Lady here at Lady Shaw um, that is supporting uh, the senior population, but there are some seniors who may not participate in programs and may uh, live alone, and some of you know who those folks are. We have the Department um, of Aging and Adult Services and our Meals on Wheel programs doing deliveries and, and wellness checks and things of that nature, but um, I think ultimately during this very uh, challenging time here in San Francisco, our goal is to provide the additional resources and just really ask that we all look out for one another as we get through this, because we will get through this um, if we support one another. And I just want to thank each and every one of you uh, for being here today and at this time with a more high level update on, on some details around what's happening, um, I would like to introduce um, the uh, Director of Emergency Management here for the City and County of San Francisco, Mary Ellen Carroll. Good afternoon. Um, thank you, Mayor. I honestly couldn't have said it better myself. Um, we do have, I have four staff persons that are in Butte County right now who are uh, basically compose the crew for the Emergency Operations Center for the City of Paradise that has suffered unfathomable loss, losses. And so our hearts and our thoughts are really with them right now. Um, from, a, from a general per overview perspective, as of this morning, the fire was about 45% contained. But the weather pattern that we're seeing is part of the reason that we are so impacted with this negative air quality. And from a report this morning, we don't anticipate that to be alleviated probably f until the next couple of days. There is some hope coming in the next week that we may have rain. So whatever rain dances or other influence you have on the weather gods, we're, we're going to put that out there. Um, from a city perspective, uh, as, as you can see, the city continues to run. We, um, we are, as we say, disaster service workers. We are here to serve the city. Um, we are taking precautions with our own city employees, and particularly those that work outside, um, to provide uh, whatever protections we can. But buses need to, to uh, continue to flow. Public Works has to work, and our first responders are still out there, and they will continue to be. From th the other uh, update I want to give from an overall response, we have done great this week. Uh, we have been at this over a week with this air quality situation. We have not had any significant impact on our 911 calls, on our health system, and uh, and at the hospitals. And I attribute that to the coordination within the city and all of our city and private partners to get the information out. And so I would just encourage everyone to continue to heed the advice, to stay inside if at all possible, to use protection as appropriate and as needed. And um, Dr. Aragon will talk a little bit more about what that means. But um, to generally, uh, to um, heed the advice and keep doing what you're doing. Because we're doing great so far in the city, we have not seen impact, and we can only, we can only assume that that is because everyone is really making the right choices and, and um, taking the time to stay inside. For our most vulnerable populations, as the mayor st stated, we have been doing outreach to our, to our uh, homeless population since, early, since the middle of last week, in particular handing out masks and water and keeping tabs on folks, bringing them inside. We have expanded our shelter beds to accommodate and our respite centers. Um, the museums uh, will be, many of our museums will be open and without free, with free admission all weekend. And for all the information about respite sites where you can go inside, the activities that will be available, uh, indoor activities um, this weekend and through next week can be found on sf72.org. So I encourage everyone to go there. And then finally, I just want to add that um, we are, uh, th this is our practice run. And uh, to, to quote the mayor, it's really about community and looking out for each other. And uh, so if we are, we're, we're impacted secondarily by this horrible event that's happening outside of our region, but certainly we could have 
something worse happen here, and we're only going to be as prepared as we are connected. So I encourage everyone to continue to keep community in mind, look out for your neighbors, and keep up the good work uh, of heeding the advice of the experts. So thank you so much. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Aragon from the Department of Public Health. Um, yes, my name, is, first name is Tomas, T-O-M-A-S. Last name is Aragon, A-R-A-G-O-N. I'm the health officer of San Francisco. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for coming here today. I know this has been a difficult challenge for everybody. I've, I've lived here all my life, and this is the first time I've ever seen anything, anything like this. And I do want to emphasize what was just said earlier, that San Francisco as a city, we are doing amazing. I'm, I'm on calls listening to what's happening in other counties, and while other counties we see increases in people becoming sick, in San Francisco we're actually, we've actually seen the same or even less. So everyone's doing amazing work. You saw that yesterday we went from red to purple, and a lot of the same advice remains the same. The most important thing is to stay indoors. That's the most important message that people need to get. And I'll go over that a little bit in detail. Um, and one of the things that people ask me is about these masks that people wear. And one of the things we want to emphasize is that these masks are no substitute for staying indoors. One of the challenges with these masks is that they're really respirators. And they have to fit really tight on your face so that you generate negative pressure and you have to breathe air through the filter. So you can imagine if you, if you get that mask that actually fits correctly, it puts a demand on your heart and your lungs. And that's why we're very careful about who wears masks because people can actually get worse. If you have an underlying heart or lung condition, you can make somebody worse. And so we tell people to be, real, the most important thing is stay inside, be, be indoors. We have we have prioritizing we have prioritized as a city getting masks to some of the most vulnerable populations, which has been the homeless, and then really our city workers that are out there taking care of the mo most vulnerable, our bus drivers, um, uh, police, and fire. Um, so that's the most important thing I want to say about masks. If you feel if you feel sick at all, make sure that you contact your your doctor. And I can tell you that our 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 public health system has been working overtime. They've been making sure that the patients that have asthma or any type of pulmonary disease, if you're, if you're taking an inhaler, to make sure you have your inhaler prescription filled so that if you need it, you have it available to you. So again, minimize or eliminate outdoor activities. Stay indoors with your windows and doors closed as much as possible. Do not run any fans that bring any smoky, smoky air indoors. If you, if you run uh, your air conditioner, it's the same thing. You have to make sure that you're, run, you're, not, um, you're not bringing in air from the outside, that you're just recirculating air from the inside. For some people, they may, actually, may, they may actually choose to go visit grandma in another county where the air is cleaner um, if, you need, if you need to leave the area. And, and um, our mayor mentioned the really, 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 really important thing is that check in on your neighbors. It's really important because not every this mess this news won't get out to everybody. So if you get out there and you talk to, and talk to folks, and the last thing I, I want to point out is that so this we have been the health department has been what we call activated our department departmental operations center has been activated now for it's going to go on to more than eight days and we've been working really closely with all the city agencies to make sure everything is working. And I, I can tell you, I, I, uh, the Department of Public Health has felt very supported, and we're really proud of everybody coming together to make a difference. And those are the most important things I want to point out. Thank you again, and I'll be available here if you have any more detailed questions about the air quality. Thank you. Thank you. And, and now I'd like to introduce um, our Fire Chief, Joanne Hayes-White, to talk a little bit about our efforts here in San Francisco and what we're doing to aid in this uh, fire. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. Joanne Hayes-White, San Francisco Fire Department. Um, thank you for having us here. Uh, thank you for Mayor Breed's leadership. We work as one big team, given her direction and with her leadership. 
And as Director Carroll stated, uh, we've been challenged this last week, but we have all risen to the occasion working together. We have our single mission with each department, but there's a lot of overlap when it comes to an event like this air quality issue. So uh, I don't want to be too repetitive, but I've been looking at my phone to get up-to-date data and information. Currently, there are 36 ambulances working in the system, of which 16 are on call. So we have 20 available at this time, which is average. It's a little bit better than the average for a Friday afternoon. And I think what Director Carroll said is that people are listening to our messaging. The best way to, to keep yourself safe uh, on a day like today is to stay indoors if you can. Uh, but if you can't, obviously the city has made some good plans and has put them out as alternatives if you cannot stay indoors. I want to assure everyone that our system is definitely handling the calls that we've seen over the last week, including yesterday and today. Uh, we have not seen a huge spike in respiratory-related calls. Again, I think more people are staying indoors, and we have this, most schools and all schools in San Francisco closed today. Um, we're making sure our firefighters are as, as safe as they can be and using precautions here on the streets of San Francisco. And as Mayor Breed uh, mentioned earlier, we did deploy, she was right on the money, 52 firefighters, of which 12 engines, three came back yesterday from Southern California, so 12 uh, of our members out of those 52 returned from Southern California. We have 40 that remain in Butte County, mostly in the Paradise area. It's part of the California's Mutual Aid Plan. Uh, I want to acknowledge and thank those members uh, for their dedication. Uh, not only is it a physical toll, but it's a really emotional toll, certainly for all the people that suffered up in paradise, uh, both in Northern California and Southern California. Uh, our thoughts and prayers go to them, but I'd also ask that you keep the first responders in mind. They're away from their families. Uh, very difficult toll on them. It's likely that the 40 that are up in Butte County, they're due uh, for a 10-day assignment. That 10 days comes up tomorrow. We're hearing that they will ask for 40 to be replaced, and we will be ready to provide that. That swap will occur most likely tomorrow. Happy to answer any questions, and uh, I don't think it's early enough to wish all of you a very happy holiday. Thank you. Um, and I just wanted to um, take this opportunity before I introduce Annie Chung to um, just acknowledge the uh, folks who are here, for, uh, the leadership of the department, um, the police department. We have with us Commander Ann Mannix. We also have uh, with us Commander uh, David Lazar, Commander uh, Dan Perea, <laughs> and your captain for the station here in this neighborhood, um, Captain Paul Yip. So thank you all from the San Francisco uh, Police Department for being here today. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Annie Chung. Thank you so much, Mayor, for bringing all of the important department heads and a lot of our department staff to give such important messages to our seniors. I'm going to just summarize your remarks and the department heads' remarks in Chinese so that our elderly know that a lot of people are thinking about them and hope that we will all and themselves will take care of this uh, crisis. So thank you, Mayor. 我現在就代表市長和代表頭先說話那麼多位局長 uh, 要有抽氣最好有一些filter 那就記住,講一講下個口罩,剛才Dr. Aragon講個口罩, to talk about the mask a little bit. 他說這位醫生戴口罩其實要很小心的,因為戴得準確,然後才可以幫助你們吸氣。對你的健康還是不好的
誒、呃、OK 嘅，即係唔係話要用好多力嚟唞氣。咁嗰啲口罩咧，你哋如果唔識戴咧，就唔好戴啦嚇。所以要好小心。嗱、啊，我哋對面咧 ，Mayor across the street is the public health centre， so our seniors could always go and get help over there。So thank you。你知道對面就係衞生局嚇，衞、啊、生局咧就係、是、開始咗啊好多服務。如果你哋真係有咁嘅需要，又揾唔到自己嘅醫生咧，咁你可以過去。誒華埠公共衛生局咁，佢哋嗰度都有好多醫生嘅。但係誒、呃，我哋消防局嘅局長 Joanne 咧就話：誒、呃，除咗我哋安老誒、呃，除咗我哋三藩市係有好多十字車係準備，如果有急救咧，係大約有二十嘅二十架嘅十字車係可以將你哋送去誒、呃、帶去醫院嘅。如果你有緊急，咁同埋咧，我哋三藩市咧亦都派咗誒五十二個救火員上去北。誒加州同埋南加州嗰度幫助佢哋嚇。頭先阿市長布里德話，雖然我哋誒三萬市好似現在嚟講係冇乜緊急，即係都聽唔到我哋嘅居民有好重要嘅緊急，但係咧我哋嘅心咧都係好掛住北方同埋誒南加州嘅。佢哋嗰啲大火咧係影到。影響到好多人係變為無家可歸，咁我哋亦都要盡我哋嘅所能咧去幫助佢哋，或者係為佢哋禱告嘅。咁啊、呃，我哋頭先啊，另外另外，其實阿 Victor 可以講一講下佢哋 EMT Mary 嗰、那個啊、呃、緊急嘅誒、呃、措施，因為聽。聽咗嚟多啲準備咧，咁啊市長咧就話最緊要咧，除咗係誒照顧自己咧，最緊要睇一睇下你嘅隔離鄰舍嚇，你住喺你隔離嘅老人家或者你嘅屋企人或者朋友佢哋有冇事。咁今次我哋安老自助處同埋可以同三藩市咁多老人家一齊度過呢個危關咧，係都係因為大家係照顧大家嘅。咁如果有啲咩問題咧，佢哋有一個網址。啊，或者 Victor 可以講一講個網址，可以俾你哋去查詢嗰啲消息嘅。咁我哋再次多謝市長同埋咁多位局長，好嘛 ？Mayor on behalf of Self Help and Lady Shaw, thank you so much. So again, thank you all so much for coming.、Um, don't forget, stay indoors, stay safe, look out for one another, and we will get through this together. Thank you all so much. Do we have any questions from the press? Oh, okay. You know, one of the things about wildfires, it's really hard to tell how bad it is because we don't know all the constituents of the small particles, and so it depends on. It actually depends on the type of for, the forestry that's burning, the buildings, the cars. So it's really hard to predict. It's unlike air pollution or even cigarette smokes, where you can you can measure the constituents and you know exactly what you're getting exposed to. From the health perspective, the most important thing is the size of the particles. The tinier the particles, the deeper the, into the lungs it, get, it gets breathed, and that's why it's really important to stay indoors. And for those people that choose to wear a face mask or a respirator, it has to be one that's tight and that works correctly. This area is very this very area is very new. There's not a lot of research. One thing that's good about what's happening right now is that you tend to see a more acute respiratory effects, not cardiovascular effects. And right now, in the city, we're not seeing the respiratory effects, which is which means that I think we're doing the right thing in terms of longer term effects. It's going to take. It's going to. We're going to require more research, and、uh, I, I'm sure our researchers are on top of the data, and we'll. I'm sure we'll know some in a few years. <laughs> 